And now is the time for making some another metal halide gravity battery. So in the past I already made some gravity batteries and the chemistry which I used was some zinc bromine chemistry. So I make some zinc bromine gravity batteries. And if you want to see these videos, the link to these videos will be in the video description. So in this video I will not make some another zinc bromine uh, gravity battery because I was thinking to replace the bromine with some aldine. For the start I will make some really basic zinc aldine gravity battery to see what I will get and then I will upgrade the battery if necessary. So for this zinc aldine gravity battery the cell construction will be almost the same which I use in this zinc bromine gravity battery which means that again I will use this acrylic pipe. This acrylic pipe will serve me like uh, the housing then here on the bottom I have my positive electrode which is actually made from conductive HDP and some graphol. So this conductive HDP was welded on the surface of this uh, graphol with some iron and then this electrode I glue with some epoxy to this acrylic tube. For the negative electrode I will use some zinc which I will insert into the tube like so and the electrolyte in this case because the battery is some zinc aldine battery for this reason the electrolyte is some zinc aldide electrolyte. So here I have one mole of zinc aldide electrolyte and actually to make this zinc aldine electrolyte you have actually three options. So the first option would be if you can buy some zinc aldide powder and then this zinc aldide powder you mix with some water and then the electrolyte will be ready. But because for the most of the people uh, finding some zinc aldide powder will be a little bit hard and if you have some luck and you will find some zinc aldide powder uh, then the prices can be really high if you buy in some small quantities. So the second option of making this kind of electrolyte will be if you buy some potassium iodide and some zinc sulfate. And when you mix the potassium iodide with zinc sulfate then you will get some zinc iodide and the byproduct will be some potassium sulfate. And then this potassium sulfate can serve you like some supporting electrolyte. And the third option of making this electrolyte will be if you mix together some aldine with some zinc powder. So the process of making this electrolyte with aldine and zinc powder is in the video which the link to this video will be also in the video description. So before I will put together this cell, please note that this gravity cell design is not meant for some serious applications. But for some home experimentation, the gravity cell design will be fine. And yeah, now let's put together this cell. So like I said before, here I have my housing which is made from this acrylic tube. Here I have uh, my positive electrode and now this acrylic tube I will fill with one mole of zinc uh, iodide electrolyte. Okay, this will be enough and now I just need to put the negative electrode into the cell and that cell is ready. So here I have some really really basic zinc aldine gravity battery but this cell will not be really good because first uh, we have here some really really limited surface area and also the distance between the anode and the cathode is too big and for this reason uh, the power which we will get out from this basic design will not be really good. 
But anyway, I want to see what I can get out from this basic design. And for this reason, now I will charge the cell. So like I said before, because the distance between the anode and the cathode is too big, for this reason the charging voltage need to be set a little bit higher than normal. And for this reason, this cell I will start to charge with, I don't know, let's say 5 volts, 4 volts, let's say 4 volts, and uh, 500 milliamps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 4 volts is actually enough because in this case I charge the cell with 214 milliamps. So yeah, I will leave the charging voltage of 4 volts uh, and then I will see what I will get. I will also make some close look of uh, the charging cell. The cell was charging for about 20 minutes and still I have 20 milliamps. But now I will disconnect my power supply and now I will measure the voltage and also the short current. Now first I will measure the voltage. which in my case I get 1.55 volts but yeah the voltage will also settle down to around 1.4 to 1.3 volts and now the current so because we have here some really really limited surface area and we also have this distance uh, between the electrodes uh, for this reason I don't expect that the current will be really high and of course here I get one amp uh, I mean one milliamp 0.7 milliamps yeah so the current is not great but for the first try the cell I mean this test cell is okay because we need to start with something that we can improve later but for now that's it and we see us in the next video bye